안녕하십니까 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung Won. One of the most serious complication when we do implant surgery is nerve injury, and today I'm going to talk on this topic. I'm going to talk of symptoms, classification, evaluation, and management of nerve injury. 간단하게 설명드리도록 하겠습니다. 예. Yeah. When there's nerve injury, the symptoms can vary. As we all know, when you do implant a surgery, the problem is damage to the trigeminal nerve, which sends the sensations from your face. There's inferior alveolar nerve, mental nerve for mental foramen, and at times there can be issues with lingual nerve as well. In the case of the maxillary branch, there can be issues in the incisive canal at times, but in most cases it goes problem-free. Very rarely there can be issues with the superior alveolar branch as well. In most cases you can go problem-free. The symptoms of nerve injury, we call this paresthesia. This is abnormal sensation of skin. Most frequently, patients experience numbness, tingling sensation, pricking sensation, itching sensation, chilling sensation. In the case of burning sensation, patients feel a lot of discomfort. If there's nerve injury after implant surgery, the most frequent adverse effect is numbness out of the different conditions of paresthesia. There are different classification of nerve injury, and there are different classifications, of course, but the most acknowledged classification is the one produced by Seran. Largely, it can be divided into three neuropraxia, exonotomasis, and neurotomasis. Neuropraxia, it is the lightest of symptoms, and there is temporary loss of motor and sensory function. Exonotomasis, there is still continuity of Schwann cell. Next is neurotomasis, where there is loss of continuity of Schwann cell. The nerve is completely severed up to the Schwann cell. Depending on the severity, there can be more specific classification. However, in general, it can be divided largely into three. Let's look at neuropraxia. This is exposure of nerve during surgery or it can be in contact with implant body. There is high possibility of recovery because there is no nerve damage. If the nerve is in contact with the implant body, if we remove the implant, in most cases recovery can be achieved. That's called neuropraxia. Exonotomasis. When you do implant surgery, this type of complication is most frequent. Mechanical pressure of nerve is applied due to drill or other tools. It can also be due to bone fragments, swelling and hematoma, and traction of mental nerve. There's higher possibility of recovery because the connective tissue frame itself is preserved, although there's a little bit of damage to the axon. So if you remove the cause, it can be recovered. In general, if there is partial paresthesia, such as in lower lip or gingiva, it can be classified as exonotomasis. Next, I'm going to talk about neurotomasis. You need to evaluate a head properly, but as shown in the image, as you do drilling, if a part of nerve is severed, if the nerve is partially or fully severed, as shown in the images, due to drilling, 
Full recovery is pretty much impossible. In most cases, if it is fully severed, with time, at times, patients say that the symptoms have improved. In most cases, there may have been anastomosis in surrounding nerves, so partial recovery may have been achieved. I don't think it is recovery of nerve itself. If it is severed, the nerve structure may be destroyed or be degenerated. If the nerve has been severed during surgery, surgical intervention is a must-have. You need to do anastomosis or do graft. Actually, this is something that is difficult to do in private clinics and it is best to prevent these situations. Let's look at evaluation of nerve injury. When nerve injury occurs, especially in relation with implanted treatment, it is related to sensory function. Therefore, we can do physical examination such as using static light touch, discrimination test, pinprick, nociception test, or you can use brush to do brush directional test. These kind of examination are available, however, it is difficult to objectify it. In the case of motor function, EMG can be used to see how much of a percentage damage has occurred. However, in this case, yes, there's neurophysiological examination, such as somatosensory evoked potential, and there are efforts made to objectify it. However, it is difficult to objectify how much damage has occurred to the nerve. In this case, visual analog scale or VAS should be used. You should ask the patient out of 1 to 10 how severe the symptoms are. Subjective aspect is included, therefore it is extremely difficult to objectively evaluate nerve damage. How are we going to manage nerve injury? It can be largely divided into four. You can just do no treatment. Second, you can do decompression, which is used most frequently. You can remove factors that compress the nerve. Third, you can do conservative management. Fourth, the surgical management can be used. In this case, this may be difficult to do in private dental clinic. You need to refer your patient to, to university hospital or specialist. Once nerve injury occurs, and if patient complains of paresthesia due to nerve injury, we just wait without treatment. We wait for spontaneous recovery. In recovery of nerve injury, different factors come into play like the age and systemic health and the level of injury. Depending on the degree of nerve injury, we anticipate the level of recovery. It is very difficult to do nothing. Depending on the severity, we wait approximately between 6 to 9 months. If it is mild, it will be mostly recovered. However, we tend to observe long term, about one to two years. If recovery occurs spontaneously, it occurs after nine months if there's legal issues. When we evaluate how much nerve injury recovery has occurred, we need to do that after one year to really be able to assess how much of recovery that has occurred. 
If you leave spontaneous healing to occur, you'll be able to get favorable healing between nine, six to nine months, even after one year. As mentioned earlier, it's not the recovery of nerve itself, but the improvement is due to anastomosis of surrounding nerves. Next is decompression. I believe this is important, especially when implanted treatment is involved. Mechanical decompression. We can remove implant or bony fragment applying pressure, or it could be hematoma as well. Mechanical decompression can occur this way after a surgery when you take post-op x-ray if implant is in contact or is an adjacent area. At times, some people do counterclockwise rotation of implant or use short implant instead. Based on my experience of treating patients who were referred to me, if there are suspect if you suspect a nerve injury, I think it is better to remove the implant entirely. When I look at patients referred to me by private clinics, and if you suspect a nerve injury, rather than changing it to short implant or doing counterclockwise rotation, it is better to remove the implant. It will be better for the patient, both in terms of how they feel and how they recover. We can always provide medicinal decompression as well. It is effective. Next is conservative management. You can also use medication if there's nerve injury in terms of conservative management. This is a treatment to accelerate recovery of nerve and to relieve patient discomfort. These two are the primary goal of conservative management. You can provide medication as well as hot pack and massage, laser treatment as well as EAST or electric acupuncture stimulation therapy. I believe the most frequent treatment that can be provided by a private clinic is medication and a hot pack and massage. These two treatment modalities are the easiest to apply. Medication is something we can use in the early stage when nerve injury occurs. You can provide steroid medication short term. Prednisolone 5 mg that will be one TID or have the patient take 10 mg for three times a day for one week. When you prescribe steroid, when the patient has heartburn, you can also prescribe histamine H2 receptor antagonist. If there's nerve injury, there is no drug that treats nerve injury specifically. You can also prescribe vitamin B12 and it really helps in treating nerve injury. You can use ATP as well as NSAID, aspirin, or gincomin, which improves the blood circulation. If there is nerve injury, I believe it is best to prescribe steroid as well as vitamin B12. This is a table about medication that can be used for nerve injury. There is drug for promoting regeneration of nerve and there's also medication that can be applied when nerve injury becomes prolonged to control neuropathic pain. When you are referred a nerve injury patient, some people just prescribe gabapentin. 
But, as mentioned, gabapentinoids, they are more for control of neuropathic pain instead of promoting nerve regeneration. This is not for recovery of nerve regeneration. This is used in the later stages to regenerate injured nerve. Basically, you should use prednisolone, in other words, a steroid, 5 mg or 10 mg, TID 1 to 2 weeks. I prescribe 2 weeks. You can prescribe it up to 4 weeks. If you use it for 4 weeks, you need to taper it. You need to have the patient in the later stages reduce the amount of drug taken. Vitamin B12 is also a very good choice. These are the medications that you need to prescribe. You can also prescribe aspirin as well as NSAID and also ginkgomin that improves the blood circulation. Surgical management. You can do surgical management to remove hematoma and you can also do nerve anastomosis and neuroma removal. This is something that you should refer to specialist rather than doing at private clinic. Therefore, I'm going to skip this part. I'm going to show you a clinical case that this is a patient referred to me. During surgery, image was sent to me, as you can see. As the dentist did drilling, the dentist is suspected of nerve injury. You see the fixture driver, you can see that the nerve is penetrated. You can assume that nerve has been penetrated directly, so it's quite problematic. It is difficult to anticipate 100% recovery. This is the next case on panoramic image. This is a situation where nerve decompression can be suspected. Medical CT was taken because cone beam CT was not readily available. The superior part of the inferior alveolar nerve was fully penetrated. In this case, as mentioned, I removed the implant. Because if you use short implant or do counterclockwise, Rotation, based on my experience, based on patient sentiment and in various factors, it doesn't really help with recovery. If you suspect nerve injury, you should remove the implant entirely and wait. This is the final case. As for this case, after implant surgery and prosthesis delivery, two years have passed and then the patient was referred to me. The prosthesia in lower lip did not improve and the patient felt numbness. When the patient went to the dental clinic, the dental clinic said that there was nothing wrong. But if you look at the panoramic image, because the superior portion of the inferior alveolar nerve could not really be seen here, I think the private clinic was confused and they thought that inferior alveolar nerve was in between the lower border of the inferior alveolar nerve and the cortical bone. Even after looking at this image, the dentist argued that there was no nerve damage because it was not in contact with inferior alveolar nerve. So I was put in a tight spot, especially because prosthesis was already delivered. In this case, it's already been two years. So even if I remove the implant, I didn't think the injured nerve will be recovered. Removing the implant is going to be difficult and in the process there may be further nerve injury. The cases that I've shown you, most of them, it was very difficult to provide a specific treatment and therefore prevention is the best policy in terms of nerve injury. I'm going to summarize today's lecture. I've talked about symptoms of nerve injury as well as the classification and evaluation method. 
I've also talked about conservative medication in terms of management of nerve injury. The prevention is best policy in terms of nerve injury, and the best way to do this is to come up with a good treatment plan. CT and other diagnostic tools have become available, so we need to think hard and do our best to prevent nerve injury. In the case of nerve injury, in my case, I would remove the implant. That is my recommendation. If necessary, you should prescribe steroid and vitamin B12. In the case of drugs like Neurontin, this is not for recovery of nerve, it's to control neuropathic pain. Please bear this in mind. Thank you for watching.